Stepping back, we can say that the Human Rights Council and its predecessor Commission on Human Rights does important work in setting international standards on human rights, from the adoption of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, in, and which has been adopted by almost every country in the world, and over 20 human rights treaties, governments have established the foundation for our modern human rights system that stretches across old and new themes. Most recently, we have a new treaty on disability rights, which is the subject of a Senate hearing this week, and new standard setting on such issues as LGBT rights, internet freedom, and rights to nationality, especially concerning women and children. But norms and treaties are only words on paper if they are not put into practice at the national level, where rights meet the realities of distinct local cultures, traditions, and legal systems. This is the main challenge of the Human Rights Council and of the human rights movement more broadly. So what tools does the Human Rights Council have for this purpose? We have treaty bodies, we have a new mechanism called the Universal Periodic Review, and we have special procedures, which is the focus of the book. The Council has established a raft of new independent experts in the last several years, ranging from thematic mandates like freedom of association and discrimination against women to a, a surprising number of new country-specific mandates on Syria, Iran, Cote d'Ivoire, Belarus, which had been eliminated in 2006 and was just recreated, and Eritrea in this most re recent session. The question I think we need to ask ourselves when we look at this activity is, are they effective in protecting victims on the ground and in moving governments to adopt reforms that make a difference? Based on our review of thousands of communications with governments, dozens of country visits, and reports and over 250 interviews? The answer is yes. They're effective because of their dual nature as independent experts, free to reach their own conclusions and recommendations based on their individual expertise on an issue, and also as instruments of the UN operating under the blue flag. It's that combination of independence operating under the blue flag of the UN that is the source of power on the ground.